Well, we're going to begin tonight with the ongoing saga of uh, another big corporate development, another big corporate story. The Grounded 737 MAX 8. Yesterday, Boeing reported its biggest losses ever. The company lost $2.9 billion for the second quarter of this year. It's amazing the way we throw out these billions all of a sudden in these news stories. Huh? It tells us something about the world we're living in. Last year, in the same period, the company posted $2.2 billion in profit. $2.2 billion in profit. A year later, $2.2, uh, pardon me, $2.9 billion in losses. What is that doing? Now the company is warning that it might stop making the 737 MAX 8 altogether. Can you imagine? I mean, th th this is not a toy. This is a plane that was selling all over the world. Joining us now for more on this is veteran journalist Ben Swan and Jamie Finch. Former Director of Family Affairs for the National Transportation Safety Board. Thank you, gentlemen, both of you, for being here. Ben, let me begin with you. The latest on this story is that it doesn't look very good for this company. What the heck is going on with these guys? You know, it's pretty incredible, Rick, when you consider the fact that that Boeing 737 MAX was, Boeing has said, was their fastest selling plane in its entire history. I mean, this thing went from being the hero of the company to an absolute zero. And of course, that's all because of the, the people who died as a result of those two plane crashes in Indonesia. And, and when you consider how failed and flawed that plane turned out to be, it's no wonder that Boeing is saying that it may come back. Now they're saying maybe in 2020, but it may never come back at all if they can't get this thing right. How big is this from a corporate standpoint as a disaster? And, you know, you almost wonder, Jamie, do they deserve this? I mean, how big? Who, who did this? This is a major screw up. They did it to themselves. Why? How? Oh. Well, because they, they were trying to cut corners. They were behind Airbus. Airbus had the Neo coming out. They, they, were, they were behind the, the eight ball on that. They were trying to rush the situation. They wanted to spend less money than they, uh, they, they should have to, create it, uh, to have created an entirely new aircraft. Mm. So they went to the old platform, the 737, which has been a workhorse for the entire industry for, for decades, and they built on that. And they, by shifting, you know, making engines larger, shifting them forward, now you've shifted the, <laughs> the center of gravity. That's why they have the, the, the computer program that's, that uh, adjusts the nose. And that's what the problem is. So, I mean, and they, and they were doing, uh, they were trying to cut costs by using cheap labor and, and, uh, and programmers from India and other, under, other countries. They weren't, they weren't at the top of their game. So this, this affects uh, consumer confidence. Ben, let me ask, I'm going to ask you a personal question. I know you're a family sure. guy with wife and children. Would you put your wife yep. and kids on a plane like this, or would you at least ask what kind no. of plane it is now? Yeah, I, I think a lot of people are asking. I don't think as many people as in the general population as you would think, but I think that, that one of the reasons that people aren't necessarily asking that is because as there were so many problems beginning to crop up with this, mm -hmm. we have seen airlines move away from it and completely ground uh, their 737 MAX fleets, saying we're not going to fly them anymore. And so that's, a, I think, a positive thing. But I also think you have to recognize, to what Jamie was saying, this is a, a software issue. And it, so among all the other things is the fact that do you really trust that right. if it's a software issue, right. you can just use a patch, a software patch to fix the problem. I'm not going to be the first one on the plane, and I certainly wouldn't <laughs> let my family be the first ones on the plane to find out if the software patch works. Right. See, that's important, what he just right. said. That's why I asked him that question right. and not you, because I know you're an airline guy. But if you're sitting here right now watching right. our newscast and you're the CEO of Boeing, right. you've you got to be concerned because it's not just Ben and Rick Sanchez. I guarantee you there's all kinds of people out there concerned like uh, this. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it permeates around the world. I mean, what, you know, bottom line, their, their customers are their are, are the airlines for Boeing mm -hmm. because they're the ones that buy the planes. But the but the air, airlines customers are their passengers, and the passengers aren't going to. And so it's going to trickle up on, on that um, uh, because the airlines are already tr are trying to adjust their, themselves and getting these things renamed, etc. So, so so where are we going, gentlemen, with this thing? If they say that they're not going to be able to now have this plane ready, apparently right. it looks to me like they lied to us from the very beginning. They kind of knew that they weren't going to be ready, but anyway, we'll leave that aside. If they can't make the planes, if they have to cancel the orders for future planes, and then what wh what are they going to do? How are they going to fill this in? Is this come? Is this is Boeing in? Jeopardy of going under as a result of this fiasco. I don't think they'll go under personally, but I do think that it's going to be significantly damaged. Not only financially, while well, we've been talking about this, because not, it, when you start lowering and slowing the production rate, in, or to actually even stopping it, but as you slow that rate of production, 
the, the parts and components of that, those aircraft that you are building mm -hmm. goes up in price because those, those parts are based on volume. And so if you're not using as, as many, then the, the, uh, produ the companies that are supplying those are going to charge you more. And so it, it, it triples, it, it goes through the entire it's, thing. It's not a good place. No, it does uh, Yeah, Ben Swad, Jamie Finch, my thanks to both of you. Great stuff. Sure. Appreciate Thank the information. Sure. So you haven't heard that we're the ones covering the stories that you won't see covered anywhere else? In Venezuela, Kazakhstan. Let's go to Hong Kong. And the media reaction to that has been crickets. How about the way we cover those stories? What the hell does that mean? Huawei, Huawei, Huawei. That's the key word in this case, uprising. Keep? Can you believe that? Watching. This is the right thing for members of the media to do, to actually pick sides. Look, if you like what you see, subscribe.